Jesus was in town. Bible says she made her way to him, but she was met with a crowd. She had a decision to make. She had to make it up in her mind. I'm either going back home or I'm pressing through what's in front of me. What stood between her and her miracle was the thing stopping her. I want somebody to understand today, God is ready and he is willing to do something for you today. But you got to be willing. I got to make up my mind. I'm either going home the same way I came or I'm going to press through the thing that's hindering me to get to where Jesus is. Come on, am I talking to anybody in this house this morning that you came here with your mind made up that I'm going to where Jesus is and I'm going to get something from him no matter what it has. I don't care what it takes this morning. I'm getting something from him. Oh, glory. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a great tragedy it would be to know that Jesus is in this house and all you have to do is to reach out with faith and anything can happen but what a great tragedy it would be for us to walk in here one way and leave the same way listen it doesn't matter what you got doesn't matter what you're holding on to if you'll give it to him before you leave this service God can heal your body come on I need somebody to amen me right there Come on, it doesn't matter what your sickness is or your disease is. We're a church that still believes God heals. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost on me, and I'm going to get in the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. I want you to turn to two or three people, shake somebody's hand. I want you to tell them, I am so glad to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Would you do that? Come on, be friendly. If you don't recognize them, tell them who you are. Tell them, I'm glad you're sitting in my section. Glad to see you in my row. Amen. tell you what I will re-emphasize if you're a guest with us we are so glad that you're here we are thankful that you chose to be with Center First Sunday morning praise the Lord praise the Lord amen amen if you will turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 8 Genesis chapter 8 and while you're turning there I would like to also say that um, along with what was announced I would like to say that uh, uh, this week I encourage everybody to make it to camp meeting. Um, It is such a great time, such a great time. And with thousands of people that get together worshiping the Lord. And uh, we've had people receive the Holy Ghost at camps. We've had people receive miracles at camp meeting. It is a great time. And I'm going to tell you, this year is a tremendous lineup of ministers and preachers that will be preaching this year. And I'm excited about it. And uh, you may see your pastor cutting up a rug. Amen. Hey, I preach to y'all. Some of y'all need to check on me and see what I'm doing at camp meeting. Make sure, Brother Winslow, you better be shouting now. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, we're going to have a good time in the Holy Ghost. So I encourage you, if you can take time to be there, be there in Lufkin at campgrounds. Um, carpool if you need to. If you, need, uh, if, you, if, you can't, if you can't go because of a vehicle, let us know. Call our, our office and let us know. And we will try our best to make way where they're taking church vans if we have to. Uh, um, we've got three. We'll, we'll load everybody up and go in that. Amen. We've got room in our vehicle. We'll load you up with Brother Winslow. You'll get some extra preaching on the way. Four amens. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And uh, we're going to get you there. Please, if you can, go. I'm telling you, it's, it's an amazing time. And God will do great things. Everybody say, I love the Lord. Genesis chapter 8, fi- uh, Genesis chapter 8 verse 15. <clears throat> and God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons wives with thee bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee 
of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. This isn't in my message, but I will tell you that it is absolutely God's will for you to multiply and be blessed. It's God's will that you have more than, than, than what you had last year. Whatever area of your life that you are struggling in today, you have a God that is a God that is more than enough. And he wants you to live an abundant life, a blessed life, a life of favor and influence. And if you want that, just say in Jesus' name. He said, go and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth and their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. I want you to see this. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. I'm going to tell you what, America better be thankful for that promise right there. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. I want you to put your Bibles down if you would, please. And I want to speak to us for a moment this morning on a revival of gratitude. A revival of gratitude. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you so much for your word that has been in my spirit and the word that is going forth today. God, I ask that as we gather as a body of believers that today we would grab a hold of what your word says about having a thankful heart and a heart of gratitude. That God, something in us would ar arise, something in us would awaken and we would look at what we have and we would look at the blessings of God and we would have a heart of thanksgiving and a heart of gratitude because Lord we have so much to be thankful for and so much to show forth gratitude unto you I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the church say in Jesus name amen thank you for standing you can be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning in Genesis chapter 8 we are told of a story that many of us have heard in Sunday school uh, many of us have not heard much preaching on Noah in a Sunday morning service because we usually hear about Noah and his ark in Sunday school. But here in this story, we get a glimpse of gratitude. The Bible tells us that after Noah and his family built an ark, and they cried out to the multitude and declared unto them, come into the safety of the ark, for there is coming rain and there is coming a flood. The Bible tells us in preceding verses that the people did not hear and they did not heed the word of God through the man of God. And so it is that when the day came that the rains came and the, the flood began to arise and the waters, they began to arise and the people that were mocking and the people that were saying, we, we don't believe anything anything's going to happen. You're wasting your time. It is that the rain came and the flood came. And the Bible says that the only ones that got in the ark was Noah.
Noah and his wife and his sons and his son's wives. They were the only ones who believed the message and they got into the ark. And it was that the flood came and the flood destroyed all mankind. Now I want you to understand this. This was a global flood. It was not a local flood, but this was a flood that wiped out the entire world. And this flood was that which was cleansing and it was a flood that that uh, brought that uh, brought about a punishment to the people that which God said in the word that we read that I will not do this again I will not flood the earth again like that and I will not wipe out mankind again for what they've done I will make a promise unto you and that promise we know was a rainbow that the Lord put across the sky the rainbow representing that God would make a promise to his people and I want to just say this to this community of believers it's not in my message but I will say this that there is a promise from God and we have a loving God who loves us and will do anything for us and somebody say amen for that so let me just say that the the colors of the rainbow they are a resemblance and a reminder of the promises of God and not pride And so it is that the Lord uh, locked them up into the ark. And the Bible says that there came a day when the floods receded and the waters receded. And that ark landed upon the mountain. And there it is that God spoke to Noah and declared unto him, all right, Noah, it is time for you to leave the safety of the ark. It's time for you to, to walk away from this, this uh, mandate that I gave you. And it's time for you to take your family. And I want you to exit the ark and take all of the animals and all of the, all of the cattle and all of the things. Uh, you know, someone once asked me, Brother Winslow, you know, I don't know why I keep getting off on things that are not my message but here we are this morning and uh, someone asked me brother Winslow uh, uh, was dinosaurs on the ark and and boy I know that could be a heated debate but I'm gonna tell you I believe they were and uh, because God created all animals amen and um, and so the Bible says that that the Lord said take all the animals off of the ark and all of the the cattle and all of the the, the flock and all of the things that you fed and all the abundance of the creeping things and the beast and all all of these animals, take them off of the ark and I want you to stand upon the ground that I have dried up and I want you to, to make a new start. I want you to be blessed and I want you, uh, the Bible says that he, he wanted him to, to be blessed and he, he wanted him to be abundantly blessed and, and here it is that the Bible says that Noah obeyed the voice of God and he obeyed him and obeyed the commandments of God and exited the ark. I want you to know this this morning. We're talking about gratitude and thanksgiving this morning, but I want you to understand that there is a role and there is a place for an obedient walk with God. We're not talking about it this morning, but I want you to know that obedience is vital in your walk with God. Obedience, there's a place for it. If we're not going to be obedient to the word of God and we're not going to be obedient to the things of God, we got to start there, folks. We, we got to make sure that we are obedient to the things of God because there's blessings in obedience. And so we see here that Noah, he is a man that obeys the voice of God. He obeyed God when God said, Noah, you better build because there's a flood coming. He obeyed God when God said, you're going to build it this big and this wide and this tall and this is the pitch and this is what you're going to, this is the kind of wood. The Bible says that Noah obeyed the voice of God. And then God says, Noah, it's time to leave that season. It's time to leave that time that I prepared you a way of safety and there again Noah obeys the voice of God but I want you to see something that took place it wasn't the act of obedience that brought the favor of God it wasn't just and there is some favor that comes from obedience but it wasn't the obedience of Noah that brought the blessings of God and brought the abundance of God and brought a promise from God that he would take care of them and bless them and multiply them it wasn't 
because of the obedience. It's found in verse 20, and I'll read it again. It's found here. When Noah left the ark, the Bible says from obedience, obeying the voice of God, that when he put his feet upon the ground, the Bible says, and Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. God did not tell him to build an altar. God did not command him to build an altar. God simply said, Noah, take your family and leave the safety of the ark. God did not command him to praise him. God did not command him to build an ark upon the ground. No, he simply said, leave and take the animals and the cattle. It was in the heart of Noah that he understood that when he stood upon the ground that dry ground there was something in him that said I think this is an opportunity I think this is a moment I think God has been good to us and I think this is a moment family that we ought to build an altar and we ought to give God some praise and we ought to thank God and we ought to have a heart of gratitude I'm telling somebody in this house this morning don't you wait for God to come oh come on somebody don't you wait for God to command you to have a grateful heart. You ought to say God has been good to me and I'm going to be thankful and I'm going to praise him. <laughs> Woo, we're talking about a revival of gratitude. I know some of us in the house are saying, Brother Winslow, but if you understood what I've been through, you wouldn't be so hard on preaching on gratitude because I've been through hell. Let me just remind you the place that Noah just left. Uh Uh-huh. It ain't like the pictures in Sunday school where everything's pretty and lovely. And uh, can you imagine the smells? Can you imagine the, the process of cleaning out pens that carried animals that were confined? Can you imagine the, the, the arguments? Ah, oh, see y'all looking at me now. You know how it is when, when family comes over. Some of y'all can only survive about 30 minutes with some of y'all's family. Woo, I felt the Holy Ghost right there. Woo, hallelujah. You know how it is. You, you, get, you get around some folks and some of y'all make up stuff to do. I got to go water the cow. You ain't got a cow. Where is he going? He, he's going to go feed the sheep. You got sheep, I guess. Come on, you know how it is when you get together and you get family together. Listen, let me, this is in my notes, but I'm gonna say it. We are a family in here and sometimes we gonna step on each other's toes, but that's all right, we'll make it right because we're family. Woo, hallelujah. Well, brother, so, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going, but we're going to go here. Brother so-and-so did this, and brother so-and-so said that. We're family. Just go up and hug each other's neck and make it right, because we're family. Woo, hallelujah. So can you imagine where they came from? Can you imagine what they just walked out? Can you imagine the time they spent on the ark and the fights and arguments and and the conversations and you go to that side of the ark, I'm going over here. Woo, don't look at your husband. Can you imagine what Noah, my goodness woman, I need some air. And can you imagine Sister Noah? (laughs) Said, listen, if you don't take that trash out. (laughs) And Noah says, where you want me to take it? She said, anywhere but where I'm at. Can you imagine the things that happened in the ark? See, we don't think about those things. All oh, the, the, the stench and, and the, the animals that maybe got at each other and the process of working in the ark and the process of, okay, God, you, you saved us from the flood, but what's next? And what are we going to do now? And, and, and how long are we going to be here? And what's next? And, and, and then he would send out the animal, the dove, and it came back. It, it, it didn't return with anything. And so they didn't have an understanding of what's going on. 
on. Can you imagine all the things they went through? And yet, in the middle of all that, Noah had an understanding of a grateful heart that even though I was stuck in a mess, and even though it stunk, and it, it had a smell, and that season was ugly, and that season was a, was a chaotic moment, in the middle of that, Noah understood, had it not been for God, I wouldn't be here today. I'm telling us we need a revival of gratitude. We need to awaken in us something that realizes in the middle of our mess. And I'm preaching to us this morning. In the middle of our junk, things may not smell so good. But you ought to recognize if it hadn't been for God, where would I be? Oh, hallelujah. Had it not been for God. And watch this. It wasn't the obedience it was the gratitude. It wasn't the obedience. It was the thankfulness of Noah. And it was that he built an altar unto the Lord. And he took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings under the altar. That's gratitude. That's thankfulness. He was trying to say to God, the first thing I want to do is to let you know, God, that I love you and I'm grateful and I'm thankful for all that you do. Noah, can you see where you came from? It doesn't matter. I'm thankful. Noah, do you understand? There's nothing there but you and your family. Nothing's there but I'm grateful and I'm thankful and watch what God did and the Lord smelled a sweet savor listen to me Noah obey me yes nothing from God it wasn't until he had a grateful heart that the Lord smelled the sweet savor and from the grateful heart the Lord said in his heart you want to you want to touch the heart of God then have a heart of gratitude have a heart that's thankful for the things of God. When your heart has gratitude, it touches the heart of God. You want to know how to get God's attention? Have a thankful heart and a gratitude in your heart. The Bible says that when Noah offered up a altar of gratitude and thanksgiving, the Lord recognized it and then he commanded, I will not again curse the ground anymore. Why? Because there's somebody who's thanking me and has a heart of gratitude. God's attracted to gratitude. Somebody say amen. Gratefulness is another way of saying thankfulness. Now, there are differences between the two, but there are so many similarities that you can't interchange them. In fact, a lot of dictionaries will use the synonym of, grati of, of gratitude as thankfulness. And thankfulness, gratitude, they're interchangeable. When we have a thankful heart and we have a heart that, listen to me, uh, we can preach about all kinds of things that will spark revival and spark blessings in your life. And we can pray and fast and shout and worship and read your Bible and the list can go on. But let me tell you, throw in the middle of all that thankfulness. Throw in the middle of that a heart of gratitude, a heart that says I'm thankful for the things of God and watch what God will do hallelujah now watch this Genesis 9 verse 1 remember Wednesday night I talked about the word of God and I declared unto us that there was not a such thing as chapters and verses so when we read uh, Genesis 9 and 1 this isn't a separate thing Genesis 9 and 1 is a continuation of the very last verse we read verses 8 and 22 it's a continuation so 9 and 1 is a continuation so watch this and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth he blessed his sons he blessed him the best thing I can do and say to you today is that when you wake up every morning and I know things are and I know things not perfect and I know there's things you're still waiting on God to do but if you can find a place in the morning when you lift up your hands and you step out of that bed lift up your voice and declare God I don't understand what's going on but I want to thank you I want to praise you I want to lift up your holy name Jesus why because that will usher in the blessings of God Whew. Hallelujah. I want to show this to us this morning. Four keys of a grateful heart. I want you to see this now because if we can ever find a place in our heart where we're grateful unto God, if we can get there, 
And I know, listen to me, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not preaching blind this morning. I'm not preaching blind up here. I know people are going through things and I know we're fighting things and I know the battle's hard and it's almost like gratitude. I would just like something to work out right for once. How about that? We're gonna talk about thanksgiving and thankfulness and gratitude. I would just like to see something happen in my favor. I understand that, but hear me now. I want us to understand four keys of a grateful heart that's gonna help us understand that gratefulness and thanksgiving to God attracts God. It attracts him. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16 declares this, rejoice evermore. How long? Evermore. In other words, all the time, don't stop rejoicing. Watch what he says. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. In some things, in everything. In good seasons, in every season. When things are going right only, in every season. God was trying to let us know, listen to me, there's always a moment to rejoice. There's always a season to pray. And listen to this, in everything, give thanks. Watch this now, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The first key is to understand that it is God's will for you to have a grateful heart. Ah, come on. See, some of us say, well, Brother Winslow, I've been going through hell, so I don't have to have a grateful heart. Uh, God said it is his will that you show forth a grateful heart. It is, listen to me, some of us will quote the Bible where it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes shall not perish. Another place in Second Peter, I believe it is, says that it is not God's will that any should perish. Oh, we love Love that part, but as much as it is God's will that none should perish, I, I'm preaching to us this morning, it is also God's will that we show forth a grateful heart. <laughs> Woo. Oh, that means when you wake up and you start talking down on things, that ain't God's will. When you look around and you're complaining, that ain't God's will. You ought to look at everything in your life and say, I will have a praise upon my heart and a praise upon my lips. I will praise him and I will be thankful because it's God's will. Whoo, hallelujah. Well, it's just not my disposition but it's God's will. Well, it's just who I am. It's God's will. Well, you don't know how I was raised. It's God's will. He said, in everything give thanks, for it is God's will. God says, my will is for you to find in your place in your heart to be thankful to have a heart of gratitude. Oh, I'm trying to hold myself back. We got places to go, hallelujah. So don't look in the mirror and say, well, I just, you know, if, I'm gonna talk to Brother Winslow this week. And once I just explain it, he gonna understand. While I sit there like a dead frog on a log. <laughs> let, let, hear me now. If you have a heart of gratitude, you won't withhold worship. You know why pastor has to push us to worship? Because we have forgotten how to have gratitude for the things God's done for us. Because any moment the man of God says, let's worship, I got lots of things to worship about. <laughs> Come on, hell was my destination, but God's blood on the cross spared me from hell. I, I'm, I'm grateful for the blood that was shed. Oh, the blood that was shed on Calvary. You got enough reasons right there to praise him. 
and some of us act like we deserve it and we, we earn this and we got a front no 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 my friend ain't one of us deserve heaven and all of us deserve hell but for the grace of God but for the grace of God Woo! and because of that I have a heart of gratitude because he spared me from a place I deserve come on somebody I don't deserve heaven but heaven is my home I'm just a passing through my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue turn to your neighbor and say this world is not my home I'm just a passing through let me tell you gratitude is the place that God honors the most a thankful heart so we must understand that gratitude is God's will Second, a key of a grateful heart is knowing who God is. I'm afraid at times we forget who God is. When you know who he is, you can be thankful. Brother Winslow, but I'm facing this. No, when you know who God is, you can have a heart that's grateful. You can have a heart that's grateful. Psalms 107 and 1 says this. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? For he is good. But Brother Winslow, I'm sick in my body. But he is good. Brother Winslow, I ain't got enough money to pay the bills. But he is good. Brother Winslow, my marriage is falling apart. But he is good. Brother Winslow, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. But he is good. Listen to me. When you know who God is. When you know who God is. When you know who God is. You can have a heart of gratefulness and thanksgiving. What does that mean? That means when I'm looking at my trouble and I don't know how it's gonna turn out, I don't look at it and complain. I don't look at it and go, woe is me. I don't look at it and go, God doesn't do anything for me. Why am I going through this? I can look at my problem and say, I've got a heart of thanksgiving because I know my God is good and a good God does good things and a good God does good things. In other words, sooner or later, I'm gonna come out of this. Why? Because God is good your husband may be no good your wife may not be no good come on your neighbor may not be no good someone you work with may not be no good but God is good and what that tells me is I can be encouraged that no matter what I'm facing, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm dealing with, I can have a heart that I can walk in Walmart and everybody thinks I'm a millionaire, but I'm broke as a joke, but I can walk in there smiling. Why? Because my God is good. And you just watch me. Sooner or later, I'm coming out of all this because God's good, but I'm not gonna wait for it. I'm gonna have a heart of thanksgiving now. You're good, you're great, you're worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Woo. My God, my God, my God. Your situation may not be good, but God is. Your health may not be good, but God is. Your marriage may not be good, but God is. Your finances may not be good, but God is. You say, well, that don't sound so encouraging. Oh, yes, it is encouraging because if I understand how good he is, sooner or later, my situation has to match his. Oh, y'all missed it. I said sooner or later, if my heart is, has gratitude and I'm thankful and I worship him, sooner or later, my circumstance is gonna as on earth as it is in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no disease in heaven. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna trust in a good God and know that sooner or later, my circumstance is gonna match the goodness of God. And so if we're not careful, We'll miss this key of, great, of a grateful heart is knowing who God is. The number three, a key of a grateful heart is remembering what God has done for you. See, some of us, we're not thankful because we've forgotten how bad we were. Oh, it got quiet. Yeah. Woo, don't go, oh, come on, pastor, go to number four. because we've forgotten how bad we were. We've forgotten when we would get in an altar and cry out unto God to
to deliver us from those sins in our lives. We've forgotten how ugly it was and how dark it was and how chaotic it was and how the feelings and emotions of our life it made us feel. And we remember the moment that we prayed and God said, I will deliver you from all sin. I'll wash you clean. I'll wash it away. And we remember when we repented and we went in that water in the name of Jesus and that blood was covered over us. We've forgotten that, how good God was. Listen, some of us need to take a memory trip and remember that. The things we used to do and the words we used to say and the places we used to go and the things we used to be a part of. Some of you couldn't make it a week without drugs. Some of you couldn't make it a week without alcohol. Some of you couldn't make it a week without going around and sleeping around. Some of you couldn't make it a week without pornography. But God stepped in and some of you need to remember the goodness of God. Come on, I'm trying to wake us up this morning to realize that the moment that I lose my heart of gratitude and I lose my heart of thanksgiving, just remember where I could be. The most ungrateful people you'll ever meet are people who've forgotten what God's done for them. You just get around somebody who's always complaining, never grateful for nothing, and they've forgotten what God's done for them. As if bringing you out of hell's grip was some small task. Some of you, God healed your baby, and you've forgotten. Your baby being aground today if it wasn't for the goodness of God and you've forgotten and you sit there. Come on, everybody in here has got a miracle, a testimony. Why are we sitting? Why are we sitting on God? They're all, listen, you know why Brother Winslow says let's worship, let's clap our hands. You know what that is? I'm trying to let us realize that that underneath the clap and underneath the waving of hands, underneath the worship is a heart of thanksgiving and that attracts God's favor and I want the favor of God but we can't get it if everybody in here has forgotten where they came from. I know some of you, it's been 50 years since you lived in the world, but can you remember the moment that God's grace found you? There's people in this place this morning that God healed you of cancer. You better never forget it. Don't let me catch you sitting down. Oh, that's hard, Pastor. Let me just tell you something. If God healed you of cancer and you're alive today and you beat cancer, don't let your pastor catch you sitting down. Well, I tell you what, Brother Winslow, could you just get on something a little sweeter? Listen to me. We can come in here and have church, clap hands, preach, do all that stuff. But, but if we don't understand that our heart has to be one of, I'm thankful. You think God's going to favor us like we want him to? Have you ever given somebody a gift and they were unappreciative of it? Did you give them another one? I'll get up here and preach about the gift of the Holy Ghost and half of you won't clap. I'll call an altar call and half of you won't come front. We'll have prayer meetings on Tuesdays and some of y'all won't come. Oh, pastor, that's rough. No, 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 no. I'm your pastor. Now listen, if you say, well, I live a thousand miles, well, praise God, pray at home. If you're working, pray on your job. 
We under, we, listen, I'm talking about folks that just, they could be here, but they ain't coming. It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. It's not Brother Winslow's preaching. It's not the shouting. It's not the building. The building's too big. Well, I'm going to get there. It's not cozy anymore. Oh, it is really quiet in here. Whew. Y'all better amen me. We're going to keep going. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, this started off well, Sister Winslow. <laughs> what is Brother Winslow saying? I, I'm, not here to, I'm not here to guide, to, 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 to measure your walk with God. That, that's not what I'm trying to do. But I'm trying to say, when we forget the goodness of God, when we forget, listen to me, your pastor hasn't been perfect either. There's things that I'm thankful for God because I know some places I could be today. I know some dark places I've walked. And if it wasn't for the goodness of God, if it wasn't for God, I know where your pastor would be. He wouldn't be behind this pulpit today. He may not even be in church. But because God's mercy and God's love, and I'm gonna tell you something, when I'm tired, I still worship because I remember I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And so if we're not careful, we'll, we'll forget the things of God, Psalms 9 and 1, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. Did you see it? He said, I will praise thee, O Lord. I will, I will give thanks with my whole heart. And I will show forth thy marvelous works. What he's saying is I will, I will, in my gratitude, in my praise, I'm gonna show forth all the things that you have done. You saved my marriage. I have a grateful heart. You saved my children. I have a grateful heart. You saved my job. You gave me a bonus. You blessed me financially. You healed me of a miracle. You, 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 you saved this. I, I have a grateful heart. I have a grateful heart. Number four, a heart of gratitude is a prerequisite for the presence of God. A prerequisite for the presence of God. Psalms 95 verse one says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all kings. And in his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is also his. The sea is his and he made it and his hands form the dry land. Oh, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his past and the sheep of his hand today if ye hear his voice let me just say this he said when you come into his presence you come into his presence with thanksgiving listen a prerequisite to the presence of God is you gotta enter in with thanksgiving enter into his gates with what and his courts with You can't enter into his presence if not first there is some thanksgiving. The Bible says that there were 12 tribes and around the tabernacle, God said and commanded to the man of God, you put every tribe around the tent, around the tabernacle. And there was 12 tribes. There was only one way into the presence of God. There was only one gate and only one tribe was placed in front of that open gate. Only one of the 12. You know what tribe it was? Judah. 
Judah was the tribe that God said, when you put the 12 tribes and you put them together around the tabernacle, the only entryway, the one tribe that I want to be in front of the entryway is the tribe of Judah. The word Judah simply means praise. What God was saying is every person that enters in, I want him to have to pass a group of people who know how to praise and know how to worship. I've come to tell somebody that the best thing you can do is have a heart of gratitude and a heart of thanksgiving that says I'm going to praise God and I'm going to magnify his holy name. David said let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise. Let us worship him. Let us bow down. Let us kneel before our maker. But notice David says before all of that when you come in his presence you should have a heart of thanksgiving a heart of gratitude. A heart of gratitude and thanksgiving is so important. Let us stand today. That it is a prerequisite of the presence of God. Hallelujah. David understood thanksgiving and gratitude. He understood it. We see in Psalms 122 and 1, David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know what that was? Gratitude. When they said, David, it's time for church. It's Sunday morning. David didn't say, but I got plans. David, it's it's time to go worship God in the house of the Lord. David didn't say, no, 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 the bass are biting good today. I know where I'm at. Oh, David, come on, man. Let's go to the house of the Lord. Come on, get your kids together. Well, I just, I, I, I don't know because I'm going to have to go by myself, so I, I don't know if I'm going to do it. No, no, no. You know what David said? I was glad when they, don't know who they are, but there they are. He said, I was glad when they came up to me and said, David, Come on, man, let's go to the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad. Something arose in my heart, a heart of thanksgiving that said, come on, let's go to church. Let's go to that. Listen to me. The best thing you can do is to be in God's house. Come on, I'm telling us this morning, the greatest thing you can do is to be in God's house. When Sunday morning comes, let there be something in you that says, listen, listen, we all, we all got to have vacations and sometimes the bass are biting. There's going to be a Sunday, Brother Winslow ain't going to be here. Just for a week. But when it comes to the house of God, something in me says... I've got a lot of baggage, got a lot of junk, got a lot of stuff, things aren't just right. Things, I mean, getting kids ready, Sister Winslow, I should say, getting kids ready. Coming to church, it can be a hassle, can't it? Thank you. On the way here, we were driving, we had Caleb with us. He stayed the night last night and so we're driving to church and it's me and Gavin or me and Kate and, and uh, Gavin and Gray and Caleb and we're just real quiet in there that you know they probably stayed up to like seven in the morning they probably actually never went to bed who knows and uh, real quiet on the way and I'm just I'm in my zone you know on Sunday mornings so I'm just kind of focused and and uh, they're just sitting there real quiet on the way and all of a sudden the Lord said, what are, you, what are you preaching on this morning? And I said, a heart of gratitude. You gave it to me. He said, well, show some right now. He said, show your, your sons and Caleb. Show them. I don't know if they heard me. They're half asleep, right? 
But I said, "Woo, man, we're going to church this morning. Woo, isn't that great? Aren't you guys glad you're going to church this morning? Nothing. I turned around and said, y'all hear me? Yeah. <laughs> what, are we, what are we showing our children? What are we showing our families? Come on, listen to me now. What are we showing our family? When we get up, we ought to tell our kids and our family, this is the greatest life you could ever live. I tell my children all the time, don't you be ashamed of who you are. This is the greatest life you could ever live. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, he didn't say I need to take care of this or take care of that. He said, I was glad, a heart of gratitude. And you might be here today and you've got things going on in your life. We're just in a few moments going to open these altars. You know, the greatest thing I think we can do in closing this service, the greatest thing I think we can do this morning is to come to an altar with a heart of gratitude, a heart that's thankful to God. And I'm telling us this morning, when we come and we lift our hands up and we begin to thank God and praise God, wherever you are, whatever you're dealing with, watch what God does in your life when he sees that I'm grateful. When I look at the car and maybe it's not what I need and maybe it's not working just right, but in my heart, I'm thankful and I'm grateful. And I say, God, I'm grateful for all that you've done. Something begins to change. Come on, lift up your hands before we ask you to the front. All across this place in closing. Come on, there's things in your life that you're holding that are hard, but you can also hold in the other hand gratitude. You're holding in one hand some pain. But you can also hold in one hand thanksgiving. I can hold in one place the pain of losing my father. But I also hold in another hand the gratitude and the thankfulness that I give God because I know he's in a better place. I can be thankful. I can have gratitude in my heart. I don't have to go around complaining. I can have a heart of thanksgiving. Come on, who am I talking to this morning? You have forgotten the goodness of God and you have forgotten all that God has done for you. And this morning, your pastor is simply trying to tell us if we'll just remember the goodness of God, if we'll just remember how good he is and all that he's done, if we'll just remember those old testimonies and those old praise reports and those old things we remember, if we'll remember them again, God can do great things. Come on, we're gonna open this altar up and I'm asking, us if we'll come to this altar with thanksgiving in our heart and begin to praise him listen you may need a, he a healing in your body if you lift up your hands and say I worship you God and I thank you even in the midst of my sickness I want to thank you I'm telling you God can heal you come on whatever you're dealing with why don't you find a place in this altar to give him some praise and to give him some